Hi all, I'd like to show you another very impressive game by Wei Yi. He was 2675 at the time of this game in the Tatar Steel Group B. This was played 24th of January 2015, so January this year, against Anna Hast, 2352. Okay, let's see how he does against lower rated opponents sometimes. So e4 with white, wait, he plays e4, Anna this plays a Sicilian defense. And we have actually the open Sicilian emerging. So pretty standard stuff here. This variation is the Sicilian Timonov, named after the great player Timonov, who played against Fischer and uh, lost 6 0 in the candidates in the run up to the 1972 uh, World Championship match. So, this is a silly time knot variation. We have here Queen F3, bit of a ram move, Queen F3, usually Queen D2, Bishop D3. These are the usual moves, thousands of games of that. But Queen F3 does 126, so slightly off the rails. And the Queen gets kicked around. And in fact, now h5 is actually, it's been seen before h5 in this position, trying to kick the queen again. There's 12 games in live book with this. Trying to kick the queen again. And it goes to what apparently is not such a useful square. Uh, the black pawn chain seems quite solid there. The queen doesn't seem so clever on h3. Uh, will this change, this status? b5, f4. Now this is very logical for black to try and black grab you know, the light square bishop, so there's less to worry about in terms of white having the bishop pair. So what is white doing here? f5, black seems quite solid and is putting pressure on white center. Rook hf1, we have e5, another, it seems very logical play from black so far. Uh, here we see queen c7. And now king b1, and actually this is, this is a very, very interesting uh, move in such, in some respects. Uh, it takes the queen off this diagonal, which you might not think is a big deal at all. Slightly more tucking away the king. But it can be very, very useful to be more tucked away on b1. We see black now playing rook c8. I think black should have played knight f6. And actually here, at this point in the game, if knight f6 had been played, I don't think black's position is too bad at all. Actually, there's pressure on e4. White is without the bishop pair. Uh, if you want an objective engine evaluation, I'll just quickly tell you. Objectively, black is a tiny bit better here. Objectively, um, overall, it seems on the on the depth of analysis. But yeah, it's not such a big deal uh, at all. It seems for black at at this point, and it's very very instructive how one little finesse, you know, the difference rook c8 makes now. It's actually almost unbelievable that the difference between knight f6 and rook c8 uh, if you, for what you're about to see it's incredible can you guess what white plays in this position it's in fact so incredible we'll start the guess the move quizzes from this position at move 17 so white to play here and i've given you a slight clue that knight f6 shouldn't uh, should have really been played and you'll see the, the importance of king b1 as well in these variations so white to play here, what would you play here if I gave you five seconds starting from now? Okay, white plays f6. And he's actually opening up the queen and the rook. And that doesn't seem a big deal at the moment because it's protected by the queen. And also, what about this pawn? What is this about? So black takes, and what's the idea now? If I give you five seconds again, what would you play here? Okay, rook takes f6. And the idea of this is not knight d5. Oh, that looks actually quite disastrous, knight d5. Uh, but actually, it's to do with d7. How can you make these two pieces seem a little bit more relevant? What would you play in this position if I gave you five seconds starting from now? Okay, bishop b6, and all of a sudden, yes, this looked quite dangerous, this queen on h3. 
<laughs> it looks as though hang on a sec the black queen can't take is it yep zap queen takes d7 checkmate okay so the queen goes to c6 this is awkward where, where else can the queen go to protect d7 unfortunately this runs into a forcing move which i'm not going to ask knight a5 and the queen okay seems okay can protect d7 again like this so any problem well yes dropping the bishop temporarily it seems knight takes b7 temporarily because doesn't it seem now that after rook b8 maybe black's going to be okay uh, if black can get the piece back uh, couldn't this be uh, a problem if black's getting the piece back in fact but a brilliant move here by white uh, an absolutely brilliant move uh, by the way if black had first played instead of rook b8 um, sorry after, in, knight takes b7 is very very important yeah if sorry if white had first played queen takes takes and then knight takes then this is even even actually it's going to be even better for black after rook g8 something like d5 and then rook b8 here it is getting the piece back and black's fine you know black's actually doing very very well there so white's got to be very very careful here uh so he doesn't you know do queen e6 he's leaving the queens on the board knight takes b7 so black plays this rook b8 and it's a there's a brilliant move here at move 22 for white can you spot it if i give you five seconds here brilliant move Okay, knight d5. So it threatens knight c7 check. Okay, let's have a look now. If black takes here, this doesn't work very well because of check. And you see the king is restricted. So king here, bishop c5 check. This is actually forcing mate this position. White doesn't take here, but in fact plays rook takes d6, forcing a checkmate. Uh, the king has got very limited uh, scope here for example queen takes g2 we've got a mate in one yeah that's actually checkmate there bringing uh, is that discovered mate and if black tries to give a square for the king like with f5 then here knight d5 check and then knight f6 check and then here the king's again restricted rook takes a6 discover chat mate so the kings are kind of mating that with these four pieces so there's no time to take on h3 here so black plays rook takes b7 what's the problem with that this is the beautiful point of knight d5 now is revealed absolutely beautiful point white's play here five seconds Queen c3, majestic. Going to use that c3 square to threaten. Mate in one with queen c8. The knight's cut controlling e7. So black has to defend that. Another brilliant move. <laughs> it's it's a wonderful demonstration of tactical fireworks, this whole game continuation. So white play here. Okay. Knight takes f6 check trying to get the queen away so if queen takes then we're mating with check well eventually it's it's mating it's it's like a mating eight from here it's hopeless um so the king goes forward and another fantastic move which is actually start with mating nine believe it or not so if i give you five seconds here white play it's unbelievable you know forcing sequence this whole thing this whole game okay protecting the knight beautifully bishop d8 check and if king takes then we just take here it's the pawns pinned so the king is drawn out to e6 and now can you spot the final move five seconds
queen h3 checkmate I don't know about you guys but this makes a very interesting impression on me how forcing moves can be so destructive as usual that's that's a usual story on chess but how you know the slight like f6 the sparks starting with f6 absolutely incredible now one little finesse by the way I do want to emphasize which stumbled me when I was preparing this video that if you might think hold on a sec you know when Queen c7 was played wasn't f6 available here and I'm going to show you a slight difference if f6 was played here without the king b1 knight takes rook takes it doesn't work here this whole mechanism doesn't work this bishop b6 because black has an important resource can you see what resource black has if I give you five seconds here black is actually winning this position or, or clearly better with check and then he's free to take on b6 the difference is with this check the king's given itself f8 so here escaping to f8 and what has white got here nothing black's actually in the driving seat for example like this check and can go back here black's in the driving seat massively up so it works like clockwork absolutely works like clockwork here though after king b1 black should have played knight f6 but this absolutely works to precision totally engine agrees with white totally with f6 and all of this continuation it's unbelievable it's 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 logical forcing moves but very nice here this this knight d5 though that that's a key move in this position it's easy for white to go wrong here less than what was might might go wrong knight d5 is beautiful vacating that c3 giving white a massive advantage a fantastic game so this is one of his earlier kind of fantastic games just this year 24th of january 2015 so i might start a we away e playlist actually because he's producing some absolutely beautiful games of chess and funny enough he did actually win the group b tournament of weekend z in january so he's definitely a great player to follow and currently is only 16 years old okay comments or questions on youtube thanks very much